everybody. Uh, Glenn Trey here, Trey Wilderness. Um, I got home from a job uh, here uh, Sunday. Days all blend together. Um, a friend of mine owns a welding fabrication company, and he had a big job in Georgia, and I asked if I'd come help him on it. So I was not here. Obviously, uh, we're not going to tell people when I'm here and when I'm not here for obvious reasons. But uh, I started unpacking my stuff, and Tammy said that I ought to do a video on this. Uh, it'd be a good video. So here we are. Um, I, like I said, I started unpacking my stuff and thought I'd show you kind of some of the stuff that I took along as a get home bag. Um, and yes, that is a long way to go. Roughly, I think it's like, uh, as far as like driving, it's like 28 or 2900 miles. And... It's That's probably a, more than that because mm -hmm. Pennsylvania is twenty five, so it's. It's. I think I think it might even be three thousand. I, I don't know. Something like that. Anyways, um, yes, that's a long hike. A long, long hike, but you do what you have to do. Um, I'm coming home to my woman, <laughs> one way or the other. Um, at least. I don't, I'm going to die trying. Um, some people might think this is a little whatever. A little weird or overkill or whatever. But once you think about it, things go, you know, say an EMP hits or whatever. And if you think that can't happen, you better start doing some research and start reconsidering. Um, but something like that happens what are you gonna do you're you know she's in Idaho and I'm in Georgia what what are you gonna do you know it's are you just gonna sit there and mope and say it's too far are you physically fit to do that you know are you not you know if you're not maybe you'll start considering getting yourself in some some sort of shape uh, not everybody's obviously gonna be that far away but you never know this job kind of came up spur of the moment and you know it was a great opportunity got to open some doors and to provide some work uh, it was hard work um 12 14 hour days but uh he provided it and i'm very thankful for it uh but anyways enough of the chitter chatter i'm gonna get into my duffel here um, obviously it's a little, I took some clothing out of it and stuff that I had. I had my other pack, um, that I carried on the plane with me. That had all my work clothes and everything in it. Uh, can't carry shampoo and stuff like that in the plane. So that was in this duffel. My work boots were in my duffel. Uh, stuff like that. Your fleece. So, huh? Your fleece. Yeah, it was Extra. different jackets, clothing. Yeah. Um, but I took that stuff out. So I'm going to show you what I had have in here as a get home bag. Um, obviously I couldn't take what I'd like to have because of, I'd have to check another bag in and I'm not going to pay for that. Um, obviously I didn't take a gun along. I would really like to have a gun with me, but that's another thing I'd have to check in and I wasn't gonna pay that, although I would really like to have one, but I'm sure in a situation like that, somewhere along the line, you come across the gun, one way or the other. So, get into this. Um, and I have to say this, I have never seen anybody who can pack as well as he does, and all that he had in both of his bags. He's very impressed, a very impressive packer. So, one of the first things is 
I have my water bottle. Um, this is a clean canteen. Uh, boiling water and such. Yeah, and this is just a strap I made up. Make it hang over my shoulder. Um, another thing I had is uh, Camelback more water you, you know hiking like that you have to keep yourself hydrated keep yourself there um, I had a couple flashlights um, I hear some socks extra socks I had still didn't take them out some shirts but explain the socks though um, okay one thing if things did fall apart uh, I would have sat down and kind of decided on the things that I would need like I would have taken some extra shirts um, fleece and stuff um, another at least one or two pairs of pants another couple shirts and all my socks and um, you know a couple extra pairs of underwear because if your feet aren't happy, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. So you got to be able to rotate them socks out. You know, keep them fresh, going. Anybody that's done any kind of walking, marching, you 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 know what I'm talking about. Um, so, anyways, I'd have taken. That's what I'd have taken. Um, had an atlas in there. A small road atlas, but it would help me navigate because you're not going to have topo maps for every state and every place you're going to go but this would help me get around some of the towns navigate around them and stuff with my compass and get get avoid as many people as you could you're not going to avoid going like that you're not going to avoid everybody sooner or later you're probably going to run into you're going to run into somebody somewhere um, it, it would be hard not to, but anyways, Matt, that'll also help you avoid the highways. Yeah, highways and Major stuff. Yeah. Uh, this a little bit of toilet paper, but um, I have a little cowboy Bible. Um, I don't care. I think that is one of my main things that I'd make sure it was in that bag. Um, life straw, uh, fifty-five gallon drum liners, the heavy duty ones. I have like five of them there, four or five of them there. Uh, a belt that my son made me, it's a paracord belt. And your strap for the um, water bottle was also paracord, yeah. so um, never short on that. A little mess kit with some silverware in that, uh, just for cooking. Hey, old man, he's trying to help. <laughs> um, this is just a, a tin, a tobacco tin that I got from a friend. I've got fire starting, several fire cubes in there. I don't need your help and a little uh, fishing kit I'm not gonna pull it out of there but has some lures and stuff some fishing line and that um, different hooks has a wine cork on the top this is actually man, I'll pull it out um, Can I send this in? it's a uh, 12 gauge shell and I have different lure um, lures and stuff down inside wine cork on top for um, a bobber or something like that and then you have different hooks all the way stuck in the wine cork and then some fishing line and a little bit of electrical tape holding that there so just a little emergency fishing kit you know that you carry um, mule tape this stuff is awesome awesome it's uh, I think 2400 pound yeah, 2500 pound test so now, that's that stuff is awesome awesome explain how you would use that 
for what? Well, explain. Well, there's um, a million uses. Uh, for there it. are, but you mentioned a couple to me um, with the rivers. Oh, building a raft and stuff to get across some of the rivers. Um, obviously, coming from Georgia to Idaho, you'd have a bunch of rivers. Um, one of the big ones, Mississippi. You know, different ones like that, flat, different, different ones. Um, but you're not going to want to go across bridges. You're going to want to avoid bridges and stuff like that because that's where the people are going to. That's a, that's a funnel point for everything that's everybody that's going to come across it. Everybody's going to try and run them bridges. Well, that's just a funnel point. That's that's. There's no better place to set up a trap than a bridge. So, um, I can make a raft. And I have a bunch of paracord in here. Uh, make a raft that I could get across and dismantle it and move on. And yes, this is is what all I took. I did not add anything to this. So, first aid kit. I'm not going to go into depth in this. There's all kind of sutures and all kind of stuff in there. Um, my hammock. That's, I didn't take the straps for the hammock because I have no strapping and stuff, but my hammock. He's um, very conscious of weight because you only have 50 pounds on the scales at the airport, yeah. so. Big old honking knife. <laughs> um, the Sog, uh, Jungle Warrior. Uh, actually, a friend of ours gave this to me, so. Thank you, Mike. Yep. So. A little bigger knife. Um, I always carry my multi-tool. Always, everywhere I go, it doesn't matter. I have that, and I have um, this knife. I carry that everywhere I go. Um, speaking of knives and stuff, I have a little sharpening stone there. Um, pull this out. <laughs> now, I had. <laughs> my little axe because you get into a situation like that an axe could be prime game changer prime 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 um let's see this bag little butt pack I'm not oh, you ought to go into it a little bit yeah. um this is a char tin I have, I get her open, I have an insane magnifying glass that I got off of a, I'm thinking it was like a 50s, early 50s pickup truck, um, thing's awesome. <laughs> and another wine cork char in there, um, my bow drill, a hank, hank of a, uh, paracord, a little folding saw, a file, a pair of gloves, mittens like, carabiners, well, not carabiners, um, another char tin that has my, um, the fire tool in there for my bearing block for bow drill and stuff. And trayer there, fire tool. Trayer fire tool. Yeah. And some more gloves, more trash bags. Um, this is a, another fire kit. Uh, obviously, I would try and take and keep um, all this for emergencies. I would use my magnifying glass, that sort of thing, as primary as much as I could. And if I had to, I'd use this stuff just to save toilet paper, <laughs> compass, um, lighter, little matchbox, more matches, some more mule tape, um, shoe goo, uh -huh. many That's uses, many uses for that. It's good fire starter. Um, little snare kit. Another little snare kit, another 
headlamp, some tea, candy bar, another candy bar, some uh, granola bar type thing, um, several more hanks of paracord, another knife, um, this is a little, little plane, a little planer type thing. Um, these things are awesome. Again, it's not something I'd have to have, but it sure would come in handy making stuff. Um, another tobacco tin with batteries, a hank of, uh, bank, bank line, another lighter. Um, I think that's about all I've got. A little bit of fat wood. I think that's about all I got in there. Um, and then coming down in here, got poncho liner, little blanket. Talking about blankets, um, I figured if anything were to happen, one thing that I'd do is I'd jerk the um, comforter off of the motel room that I was staying, I jerked that one off and take that along with me. Um, I'd also be gathering some other things in the motel as I was heading out the door if, if I had the opportunity to do it. Leather gloves. Uh, whatever, wherever you're from in the country, a toboggan, a beanie hat, a sock cap, wherever you're from. Anyways, nice, nice hat. Keep, uh, keep your head warm. <laughs> keep that, keep that head warm. Keep Less heat, heat that is, is escaping you. Um, gators. And you might say, why gators? Um, well, for several reasons. Snow, for one, but one of the other big things is snakes. Going through a lot of snake country between here and there. Um, that's why I had them in there. Protect yourself. Big hank of uh, bank line. This is the heavier bank line. snares Got and a lot of uh, a lot of people say well snares are a one time use yes and no um, depends on how they're set set up depends what you catch yeah but these springs I don't know if you can see them on there but these springs do an incredible job at killing things. We'll leave it at that. Um, very quickly. Very, very quickly. I was going to leave it at that, but I'm not. Um, put it this way. I caught a deer, and anybody that snares, um, it's inevitable. Yes, I have breakaways on here. By law, we have to have breakaways. Um, but these springs actually killed that deer so fast it didn't even allow that breakaway to engage so it just laid down and it just hit the end of that snare and boom and i've i could have reused that snare again um so i had what two four five different snares um i could have used several times Taking it, you know, set up on a trail, caught a deer. Deer are easy to catch if you have to. Um, very easy. But I could have used them over several times over, I know for sure. And that's a smart thing to have in the event that you're going from one place to the other and trying to go as unseen as possible. You know, there's no uh, noise. gunshot, no noise. And, and, and it's, you know... You could take that meat then, 
you'd set up a little camp and do a do a recon around the camp within a mile make sure nobody's around you set up a little camp smoke the meat tear down camp and head on um, you don't want to be building a fire and having smoke and stuff and you're smoking this meat and right over there's somebody else's camp or something like that you don't you don't want to have that so anyways uh, more <laughs> toilet paper um, this is kind of uh, some aspirin some um, Tums what some water purification drops um, Benadryl. Benadryl and some stuff like that um, let's see and you got to understand this is his mindset this has Three. been his mindset his whole life yeah. as a young boy he was out in the woods doing this kind of stuff so this is his mentality this is how he thinks reusable space blanket how we think um, and then last but not least a little neck knife so uh, that could be attached to something too yeah. um, to catch fish and well, gig yeah it's a little short for a gig but mm. um, frog legs frog legs yeah I'd make mm. up my own gig and stuff but that's um, that's pretty much what I had in my get home bag from airport and I'm very comfortable in my skill set that I could have made it home and I'm not saying there is n would not been hard times because anybody that thinks you're just gonna go out there and beep up around the woods and it's all gonna be fun and Jim dandy um, <laughs> better get out there and do it yeah because um, sure. it's not especially in a situation like that that it would be hostile situation you know you're gonna have to evade people you're gonna have to get away you know find ways around stuff and and be on your toes um, it wouldn't be a fun fun situation but I, I feel comfortable I, I if something bad would have not happened to me you know say uh, whatever I, fell off a cliff or got shot or whatever um, and I, I I'm gonna say this um, you know blowout kits you know in your bag uh, tourniquet and stuff like that yeah you know that's that's all fine and Jim dandy but you take around in the chest you're not you're not gonna do anything about it especially when you're by yourself you're not gonna do a pleasant thing about it that's just the hard truth of it you know you you catch something in that femoral artery that runs down your leg get shot and you're done you're done if you're by yourself I'm sorry you're not going to perform surgery on yourself and connect that vein or that artery and save yourself you're not gonna do it you're done and people say about how oh, you do this and you know all that well that's not gonna happen especially when you're by yourself it's 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 you're just foolish if you think you're gonna do that if you think you're gonna survive a gunshot wound to any kind of artery your chest anything like that through your lung you know, you long maybe, um, if you do certain things, um, you long yeah, maybe, you, you'd be okay, it, you keep it from getting collapsed and so on, but really your chances are, are not good, you, you uh, get shot. Your arm, you know, as long as it didn't hit bone and just shatter it, um, destroying other stuff in there you know you might be okay you'd be okay you know that's where a blowout kit would come into play and stuff um, and, I, and I'm not putting down blowout kits because I think they're very important but if 
you think you're going to save yourself uh, getting shot in some in certain parts of your body you're, you're just you're not you're not going to um but anyways um so that's what i that's what i had um and i like i said i'm i'm confident that i could have you know made it lord willing nothing you know as far as like falling of a cliff or get shot or anything like that uh, would have happened. And I trust, I, I trust in that too. I'm very confident in his skills and his abilities. So, and I had my duffel, so double as my ruck. Um, you know, I could use, use that as my ruck, my pack. Um, I'd have had my other pack that I had all my clothing. I'd have also carried that in here. Um, just as a backup because you don't know say this failed on me um traveling that far traveling that far you better have some kind of backup you better have some kind of plan b you know going on so and i just i'm just gonna add something you know all those things that he has laying there that he's described you know many of you may be very familiar with all that stuff some of you may have heard it but you're not sure how to use it some of you might have kits sitting by the door, bags sitting by the door with all that great stuff in it, but you have no idea how to use it. We talk about this a lot, and, you know, one of the most important things that you can do, and he's already mentioned one of them, is getting out and, and realizing what it's like. Go out camping for a weekend. We, we do this often where we'll go for a three-day jaunt and go out, and we won't take any food with us minimal food like sometimes we'll take seasonings and oils and stuff and we'll harvest and forage berries and eat a uh, if you're gonna do this be very sure you know what you are eating right do not eat something that you do not know that you can't identify you cannot identify you do not know if it's edible or not you do not eat it that's just asking for trouble do not eat it but we've eaten raspberries and there's yeah and, it, it, there's and all kinds of stuff if you know right. what you're looking for we've lived off of frog legs and cattail roots already you know it just but the thing is is to go out and feel what it's like to live and exist very minimally and and we did that while we lived in a wall tent for eight and a half months while we built our house too but the thing is you know it's it's a lot it's great to talk about it and it's great to have all this stuff but if you don't know how to use these things you're not doing yourself a service a justice of any kind because when you go out and you're stuck in that situation and you don't know how to use this stuff it's just going to add more stress and panic to the already stressful well, and panic situation you, you you take any anybody has everybody has been in some kind of stressful panic situation um if you don't know how to control your mind and, and, and calm yourself down and, and take control the best you can of a situation, um, you, you can't take something, it's like having a gun and hardly shooting a thing and getting into a firefight and expecting then to know how to use it and how to, how to shoot. It's not going to happen. It, it, the, the stress level is too high. You're, you're not gonna, your brain's not gonna function. It's not second nature. It's not clicking for you. So you need to be able to know how to use this stuff before it happens, before things happen. So it's good practice. I yeah. mean, even even if if you are well versed on it, the more you practice it, like you said, the more it becomes second nature, and the easier it is to do. Like. Just example, lighting a fire. Right now, if we went out here in our woods to try to light a fire, we've got 60 inches of snow over the last three weeks, so everything's wet. You know, you got to learn how to light fires in all kind of conditions and circumstances and do it multiple, you know, and practice it. So, I'm sure this video is long enough. Um, those of you who have stuck through and watched the whole thing, thank you. Um, <laughs> Maybe even this might get broken down into a couple of videos. I don't know. But uh, thanks again for watching our videos. And hopefully I'll get to make some more videos and just see how things go, uh, how work and stuff.
plays into all this. Uh, but um, thanks again for everyone who's praying for us. Appreciate it. And uh, I guess with that being said, take care. God bless, guys. We'll catch you later. God bless everybody.